Thank you for joining Operation Gratitude to make paracord lanyards. This video will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make your lanyards. Let's get started. First, you'll need paracord. If you're cutting your own cord, you'll need to cut it to five feet and make sure you seal the ends to prevent fraying. You can do this by using a lighter to heat the end until it begins to melt and then squeeze it with a pair of pliers to keep the inner strands from coming out. Let's begin by finding the center of the paracord by running your hand down the cord until you reach the end. This is how you'll create a loop. Once you've created your loop, you'll twist it over and put the end through the loop to begin the knot. When you've tightened the knot, it should just be big enough to fit over the tip of your thumb. Next, you will separate the two pieces of cord to your left and right. Please make sure you do not let the cord hang straight down. Otherwise, the cord will twist back and forth. Begin by holding the knot and taking about three inches from the center to create a loop on the right-hand side of the cord. Next, Make a loop with the left-hand side of the cord and insert the loop into the loop you just created with the right-hand side. Don't forget to always insert the loop from the front. Now, you'll pull down on the right-hand side to tighten the outer loop around the left-hand side loop. After this, you will create a loop with the right-hand side of the cord and insert it through the loop you just created, pulling down to tighten again. You may notice how the loop is now pointing to one side. The direction the loop is pointing tells you which cord to use to create the next loop. If it is pointing left, you will use the left cord to make a loop. And if it is pointing right, you will make a loop on the right-hand side and then tighten. But don't worry. You do not need to tug the cord tightly in order to tighten the loops. A gentle tug will work perfectly. A tight tug can accidentally cause the lanyard to fail when deployed. It is best to hold the center of the lanyard to give some control as your lanyard begins to grow longer. Now we will begin to repeat the stitch until the lanyard reaches its full length. Remember that as you build your lanyard, you are not twisting it, but always putting the loop through the front on the same side each time. If you notice your loops look a little lopsided, don't worry. Give it a little tug here and there to tighten it up. Remember, the loop should just be big enough to fit over the tip of your thumb and no twisting. The two pieces of cord should be to your right and left when you create your loops. If you've accidentally used the wrong side of the cord to create a loop, the cord will not tighten correctly. The good news is that you can pull the wrong side of the cord out 
and begin again. Remember to keep your cord out to the sides to avoid twisting the lanyard as you make it. And be sure to insert your loop from the front. Make sure to keep your loop to one inch. The shorter your loop is, the easier it will be to work with as you continue to make your lanyard. When you have approximately six inches of cord left on both sides, it's time to finish your lanyard. Don't be concerned if your ends are uneven. We will address that later on in the video. To finish up your lanyard, insert the end of your cord into the loop and pull it through instead of making another loop. Then pull to tighten. This can be done with either side of the cord. Now, we will work on creating a knot by wrapping the cords around your finger and inserting the ends into the loop. Next, tighten the knot so it is as close as you can get it to the bottom of the lanyard. It does not have to be as close as we have here. If it is an inch off, that works great too. The lanyard is now finished and it should measure between five to seven inches depending on the thickness of the cord you have used. The overall length of the leftover cord should be approximately two to three inches. If one side is two to three inches longer than the other, please trim, heat, and seal the long end to match the shorter end. We will now show you how to trim, heat, and seal the cord. Should you find yourself needing to deploy the lanyard, untie the knot you made at the bottom and pull the end back out of the last loop. Hold one end of the cord in each hand and pull. The lanyard will open just like a zipper in seconds. Congratulations, you have made a paracord lanyard. We appreciate your help creating this important item that will be included in all our care packages. If you have questions about our paracord lanyard program, please feel free to reach out to us. Again, thank you for your participation.